side equation is used, if you're not in standard conditions, then uh, you're going to find the delta G by using this expression right here. Now, that gets us to this Q. Uh, the Q is the ratio of products to reactants. Q is only good for gases and aqueous. Uh, if you have gases, then the Q is going to be the pressure of the products over the pressure of the reactants. And then if you have solutions, things dissolve, uh, it'll be the concentration of products over the reactants. Okay? Uh, so the Q tells us where the reaction is. At the beginning of a reaction, before any products are made, what's Q? Q would be zero. Because remember, it's products over reactants. And if you don't have any products yet, then Q is zero. As the reaction proceeds to the right, what's happening to the value of Q? The products are going up. There's more products and there's less reactants. So that, that ratio is changing and it's going up. Yes? Yeah. So yeah, Q starts at zero and then it goes up. Q never becomes negative. You can't have a negative product of reactants. The, the pressures have to be positive values. Now, when does Q stop going up? Either when the reactants run out and Q is infinity, or when the reaction comes to equilibrium. And the reaction will come to equilibrium, and at that point, the Q is equal to a, a different term that we're going to call K. And uh, at that point also, when the reaction gets to equilibrium, it stops. It stops because there's no longer a push to make it go right. What is that push when it was going right? Remember the sign on delta G, how important that is? If delta G is negative, what does that mean? Delta G is negative. It means the reaction is spontaneous. That means the reaction is going to go to the right. And if this thing is negative, it's going to go to the right. This constantly changes, though. It changes until what? The reaction stops at equilibrium. When is this thing at equilibrium? Zero. Right, delta G is zero at equilibrium. Not that term. That term, remember, is a constant. But this term right here is zero when the reaction stops at equilibrium. And so since that term is zero, if we take that expression and move it over to the left side, we have delta G equals negative RT, and we change Q to K, natural log of K. Yes, sir? So you're saying that if uh, all the reactions are now the gives energy is going to be infinity? Yes. I said no, I didn't say that. The Q becomes infinity. Yeah. So Q is infinity. Q is infinity. That means the, the natural log is infinity. infinity. Yes. Does that make sense? A little bit. Oh, you should say no. Yeah, it makes sense. A positive or negative infinity? Um, Bad answer. Uh, this thing right here is always positive, right? So uh, when that goes to infinity, when Q goes to infinity, natural log of Q goes to infinity, oh, R yeah. and T are positive numbers, so that's positive. Somewhere along the way, the delta G passed zero and became positive. So if you have a G, a delta G that's positive infinity, we're going to learn this hour that the tendency is for it to come back the other way. Just like if delta G is zero, uh, it doesn't tend to move. If delta G is negative, it tends to go to the right. So if delta G is positive, it tends to go to the left. It's never going to be infinity. It really never is infinity. You can't do an infinite amount of work. That's what delta G determines is how much work can be done. Let's say you have like two, uh, let's say you've got two, three atoms, hydrogen, hydrogen, and oxygen. Then 100% of it will react. Can you define a concentration of your hydrogen and oxygen? Not really. Yeah. So yeah, I mean that's not very practical. You need a, a macroscopic yeah. amount to be able to tell that. Okay. Just another uh, couple of things about R. We have learned that R can have different values depending on what the pressure unit. This R isn't really dealing with all gases all the time because you can deal with um, 
solutions too. So this R, when you use it, is going to have to involve the energy unit of joules. That's the only, well the only time is when the value of R is kilopascals liters over moles Kelvin, because a kilopascal liter is a joule. So for all the thermodynamic equations, when you have R, use 8.31 joules per mole Kelvin. This number, even though we call it the ideal gas constant, is also known as the thermodynamic constant. That connects joules with how many moles and uh, uh, what the temperature is. And this, uh, remember, delta G is temperature dependent. But that standard term there, that means that side is a constant. So that doesn't change with temperature. Um, the non-standard one does. Okay. Did I have one other thing for you? I'll answer some of the, oh, I know what the other thing was. Uh, some of the other things that are kind of hanging, hopefully we'll be able to address this hour and, and uh, get me ready for the quiz. The other thing I wanted to mention was, even though the R value uses kilopascals liters, when you find Q, the ratio of the pressures, it must be in atmospheres. You might want to write that down. The Q, products over reactants, has got to be the ratio of the atmosphere's unit of pressure. No. Uh, if, if you're not in atmospheres for the Q value, you've got to change the atmospheres. And so the ratio there uh, in atmospheres, you'll not get any unit for Q. It's a unitless quantity. Even if the uh, atmospheres don't cancel out, you don't put any unit on Q. Or on K. K never has a unit. You'll never see you and I can. So you were talking about changing the kilopascals. I know that this R term uh, has kilopascals kind of built into it, but it's not dependent at all on what the uh, unit on K is. Well, there is no unit on K. So uh, just make sure that your Q value is the ratio of the atmosphere. Okay. All right. Now. We're going to do mainly example problems today, but I do have one new concept for you. I asked them last hour to grab a book. Do you have a book at your desk? If you don't have one, then grab one. Giving up your servant attitude. <laughs> Try this problem. It looks like it's simple enough. You have a very simple chemical equation. Very short question there. Find K at 25 degrees Celsius. Uh, page A19, really A20. the delta G. You're going to have to use this last one to go from delta G to K, but um, remember in that thermodynamic table, everybody listen to this, because that I was kind of waiting for everybody to get self in, then I was going to talk about that. That thermodynamic table that you have, the first column of data is the delta H of formation, the second column of data is the delta G of formation. So you can always find delta G if you have that table, the standard delta G at least, by taking the products minus reactants from that set of data. Uh, and this is just like enthalpy in which the, uh, the elements are all zero for their, their free energy of formation. So use the middle uh, column of the data table, and you'll look up SO3, find its delta G of formation, minus two times the delta G of formation of SO2. That's it. That'll give you the delta G. Then you have to use this equation. And the number that you get at the end is... I don't know, it just gets your attention. Do 
we have to do the like minus p delta add to this or not? Not if you use the uh, products minus reactants. Oh. You could find delta H and delta S and then use delta G that equation. Or you save all that trouble and just find the delta G straight up. More than the e to 100? Yeah. It's it's power. <laughs> it just said like, it's a, it's a really big number. Really? That's what it said in the yeah. entropy? <laughs> Stop it, then the uh, the video is all chopped. Yeah. And I've got to upload lots of different segments. This is not standard. I'm sorry. Um, from the table is going to be negative 142 kilojoules. Not kilojoules per mole, just kilojoules. Um, don't forget to multiply the SO3 by 2 and the SO2 by 2, right? Uh, and then the O2 is 0 anyway, so that won't be a factor. So delta G equals negative RT, natural log of K. This is always in kilojoules, the delta G is. But R is in joules, so be careful of that too. Make sure that the units are, the units are consistent on those. So this is negative 142 kilojoules equals negative 0 0.00831 kilojoules per mole Kelvin times 298 Kelvin times the natural log of K. So you're going to move the constant values over to the left side and That'll give you the natural log of k. We want just k, so you have to raise both sides to the power on e. So with your calculator, you'd hit second function natural log, which is going to give e to the x power, and then enter with the answer you get in both. Yeah. Yeah. It's a change in unit to kilojoules, not oh, joules. So it's mostly always going to be in kilojoules that means that it could Yeah. Yeah, so 8.31 is the number we remember, but usually when you're using this equation, you're going to change it. Not usually, you always will. So you get a giant number. You're going to get e to the 57th power. What's that? 